with a growing number of users every day of the amazing functionality of Power Query, Data Modeling and BI. Yet we end up using the most popular analytical and reporting tool in Excel, which is creating pivot tables. I am Nabil Murad. If you think you know everything about the methods and sources for creating pivot tables, then please watch this video and think again. In this tutorial, I show you 12 methods and sources for creating pivot tables from basic to mind-blowing. So let's dive in. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. The most basic and commonly used technique for creating a pivot table is by using a list as a source of data for the pivot table. And to do that, I select any single cell in my list, I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon and I click on Pivot Table. I'm using Microsoft 365, then I have the new special wizard that pops up. It's a small wizard because it opens a different box according to the data source. Here it says at the top, pivot table from table or range. This is the same functionality available in the installed version of Excel, but the wizard is bigger in size because whatever the source is the same wizard that will pop up. Here, all what I need to do is to specify whether I want my pivot table to be in a new worksheet or in the existing worksheet. Let's create this one in a new worksheet when I hit OK. This is the pivot table placeholder and this is the pivot table field list. I can drag the region to the rows area. I can drag the cost of goods sold to the values area and I would have created my very basic pivot table. I can also convert my list into a table. There are different ways of converting lists into a table. You can watch my tutorial about the secrets of lists and tables. The link is in the description below. There are six ways of converting a list into a table. The easiest way is by using the shortcut Ctrl T. I already converted my list into a table. If I go to the table design tab, I named it my table. And to create a pivot table out of this table has an advantage over the list. Because if you add more records due to the table auto expansion functionality, these records will become part of the table and will be reflected on your pivot table report. All what you will need to do is to hit the refresh button. So if I want to create a pivot table out of this table, then I go to the insert tab of the ribbon, click on pivot table. I'm still in Microsoft 365. The same functionality is in the installed version of Excel. Here, instead of selecting a range, then it shows me the table name, my table. Then I'm going to hit OK to create my pivot table. When I hit OK, I can drag a field to the rows. I can drag a field to the columns and I can drag the sales, let's say, to the values. And then I start customizing and formatting my pivot table as needed. If you are unable to envision how your pivot table will look like, then Excel has an option for you. So if I go to the Insert tab, and instead of clicking on pivot table, I click on recommended pivot table. Then in this case, the recommended pivot table dialog box opens. It selects your data in the background and it recognizes your data and gives you some options accordingly. So here I have the sum of cost of goods sold by region. And then I have the sum of sales by manager. You can select any one of these thumbnails and it's just a starting point for creating your pivot table. You can always go and customize it. So let's say I'm selecting this one, sum of cost of goods sold and sum of sales by payment. If I hit OK, then a new worksheet will be created for me and this pivot table will be created automatically and I can customize it the way I want. Before I hit OK, I want to show you if you decided that you want to start from scratch building your pivot table, then this option blank pivot table will create a pivot table as if you click on the pivot table icon to the very left of the insert tab of the ribbon. I hit OK, and here is the pivot table that I saw in the thumbnail. I don't want the sum of cost of goods sold, then I can simply drag it out. I want to bring the manager as a column header, then I drag it to the columns drop area, and I can keep customizing my pivot table. The functionality of recommended pivot table can be triggered simply by selecting your source data. So I have one single cell selected, then I'm going to hit Control A to select the entire source. 
and all what you need to do is to hover over the lower right corner this is called the quick analysis tools you can open it by hitting the shortcut Control q or by just clicking on it it opens this window which has five tabs at the top it offers different functionalities but i'm interested in creating a pivot table so if i click on tables here it shows me the different thumbnails just by hovering without clicking so i can look at the different pivot tables i can select whichever one i want and when i give it a click then it will create the pivot table automatically in a new worksheet. Excel has a built-in artificial intelligence, and although this functionality is relatively new to Excel, but it's evolving fast, and this functionality is available on the right side of the Home tab. It used to be called Ideas, and the name changed twice, and the icon as well, and now it says Analyze Data. If I'm selecting a single cell in my source data, and then I give a click to Analyze Data, it opens the Analyze Data and in brackets Ideas to the right side of my screen, and here it shows me different previews. It has already analyzed my data and it shows me different options. This one is for creating a pivot table. This one is for creating a pivot chart and it will automatically include a pivot table with it. I can scroll and look at the different options and select whichever one I want. If you like, you can also query your data by typing a question. So if I want, I could simply type a question in the box in the top of this pane. So I'll be typing average sales by payment. And then I click on the right pointing arrow, submit question. Now it will give me a suggestion. If this is what you want, then just click on insert pivot chart and a new worksheet will be created to the right side of the last worksheet and it will be named suggestion. Here is my worksheet. It has the pivot chart and the pivot table. I can customize it the way I like. So if I select any cell in the pivot table, now I see the pivot table field list. I might have some data in an external workbook. And this workbook could be anywhere, whether installed on my machine or in the clouds. And I would like to use the data in this workbook for creating a pivot table. Then I need an external source. This functionality is also available in the installed version of Excel using the regular wizard, and it's available now on the Insert tab of the ribbon. Do not click on Pivot Table because we have this down pointing arrow, and when you click on this down pointing arrow, it shows me different options. Clicking on the button directly, that's the equivalent of selecting the first option, and now I want to select from external data source. The dialog box opens, and here at the top it says external source, and what I need to do is to choose a connection. When I click on choose connection, whether you are using Microsoft 365 or you are using any installed version of Excel, the steps are exactly the same. So I click on choose connection, the existing connection dialog box opens, and I go to the lower left corner, I click on browse for more. I have to navigate to the location of my file, and I select Sales Data Excel file. The Select Table dialog box opens, and because I have one single worksheet and I named it Source, then I see it here. If I have many worksheets, I would see them listed in this box. And make sure that you check the box. First row has column headers, and when I hit OK, it will take me back to the same wizard where I have to select a destination for my pivot table. I want to create my pivot table in the existing worksheet in cell A3. Then I hit OK, and here is the pivot table field list. All what I need to do is to drag and drop the different fields. So I'll be dragging the manager to the rows. I'll be dragging the region to the column. I drag the sales. This pivot table is created using data from an external workbook. And even if I'm not connected to this workbook anymore, let me simplify the pivot table. I remove the region from the columns. I remove the manager from the rows and I just have the sum of sales and I'll be using the beautiful functionality of pivot tables for rebuilding my source data. This is called show details. It's available in the right click menu. If I select show details or simply by double clicking, we call it the drill down feature of a pivot table. The moment I double click, it will bring all the source data in a new worksheet. I created this pivot table using an external workbook. I might be using multiple external workbooks or multiple files from a folder. 
If I get the data, clean it and transform it in Power Query, and then save my query as a connection only, I can use this query for creating a pivot table. So if I go to the worksheet Power Query, in this workbook I do have a query, so if I click on the Data tab of the ribbon, click on Queries and Connections, it will open the Queries and Connections pane, and I see a query named My Query Connection Only. Now I want to create a pivot table using this query. I'm going to close the Queries pane for now to make some room. I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon. Now this time I click on the down arrow of the ribbon and I select the same option I used before from External Data Source. I need to choose a connection and the functionality is also available in the default wizard in the installed version of Excel. So if I click on Choose Connection, I see my query, I select it and then I hit Open. It takes me back to the wizard where I have to specify a destination. I want to create my pivot table in the existing worksheet. I select a destination for my pivot table and then I hit OK. And immediately I get the pivot table field list and the pivot table placeholder. Simply drag and drop the fields as we always do. And I created my pivot table from a query. In all the previous techniques, I had to go to the Insert tab of the ribbon and use the functionality in the Tables group to the left side of the Insert tab. But I can also indirectly create a pivot table by creating a pivot chart. Although the norm is to create the pivot table and then create a pivot chart, but with one single cell selected in my source data, if I go to the right side of the Insert tab and click on the down arrow for Pivot Chart, I have two options, pivot chart or pivot chart and pivot table. They are exactly the same except for the location of the pivot table that will be created. One of them will create in cell A1, the other one in cell A3 of a new worksheet. I'm going to select the second option. The create pivot table wizard opens. That's the same exact wizard available in any installed version of Excel. I want to create my pivot table in a new worksheet. I hit OK, and it creates a placeholder for my pivot table, a placeholder for my pivot chart. I can customize my pivot table by dragging fields to the different drop areas. One of the most common functionalities Excel users do is to combine data from multiple worksheets and consolidate it in one single report. And although I could do that by using formulas and functions or by using the consolidation tool available to the right side of the data tab of the ribbon or by using Power Query, but I can also use a pivot table to consolidate multiple sheets. Let's have a look at the work situation. I have three worksheets having data coming from three regions, the east, the south, and the west. So if I click on the east region, I have in column A some products, and then I have in columns B, C, D, E, I have different quarters, and then I have the sales amount for each product in each quarter. This data represents the east region. I have the same exact layout for the south region, but with different values, and the same exact thing for the west region. In order to consolidate the data from multiple sources by using a pivot table, then I need to use the old pivot table wizard, which is not accessible except by using a shortcut. I'm going to click on the Consolidate Worksheet. I have cell A3 selected, and to trigger the old pivot table wizard, I have to use the shortcut Alt-DP. I'm going to close the wizard because there is another way of triggering it, is by bringing the functionality to the Quick Access Toolbar. I'm going to close this wizard, and I want to customize my Quick Access Toolbar by clicking on the down pointing arrow to the right side of the Quick Access Toolbar and select More Commands to open the Excel Options dialog box. I want to switch to Commands not in the ribbon. I select any value and I hit P because I want to jump to letter P. I'm looking for Pivot Table and Pivot Chart Wizard, and here it is. I'm going to click on Add to move it to my Quick Access Toolbar, and when I hit OK, I can see it in my Quick Access Toolbar, and instead of hitting the shortcut Alt-DP, I can click on this command, and it will open the wizard of three steps. This is step one of three. This wizard enables me to do so many things, among them multiple consolidation ranges. 
When I select multiple consolidation ranges, how would you like to create a report? I want to create a pivot table and I click on next to move to step 2A of the wizard. In step 2A, it asks me, would you like to create a single page field? Yes, I want to create a single page field. What does it mean? It means a filter field and it will be creating a filter using the sheet name. So in my filter, I will have east, south and west, but they won't appear in the filter as east, south and west. They will appear item one, two and three sorted alphabetically by sheet name. Now, if I click on next, it will ask me, OK, go ahead. This is step 2B of the wizard. We need to specify the ranges to consolidate. Then with my blinking cursor in the range box, I click on the East worksheet. I can move this dialog box to the side to be able to select my data. And then I click and drag to select the cells. I'm selecting all the ranges. I'm selecting the row labeled, the column labeled, but I'm excluding the total column and the total row. I hit Add to move this range from the upper box to the All Ranges box. And I want to add two more ranges to consolidate them together. When I click on the South worksheet, you might be surprised that Excel is pre-highlighting the range for me because Excel is assuming that whenever I use this tool, I'll be consolidating multiple ranges in the same location. All what I need to do is to hit Add, and then I click on the West worksheet. All what I need to do because the range is pre-highlighted is to hit Add. When I hit Next, it will take me back to the wizard. So I hit next and here is step three of three of the wizard where I specify the destination for my pivot table. A3 is selected and that's fine. I hit finish and I would have created my pivot table. I have the different products, the different quarters, a grand total is created, the data is consolidated from the different sources. I need to go and change the column labels and the column headers. And then I have a filter and this filter shows item one, two and three. Each one of these corresponds to one of the worksheets if you sort them alphabetically. And it's easy to create a label that is dynamic using a VLOOKUP function that can replace item one by the name of the sheet. I want to name this pivot table and I'm going to name it consolidated. I created some pivot tables. What if I want to create a pivot table using the same data from another pivot table? Here, the old pivot table wizard comes handy. I can open it as I did before by using the shortcut Alt DP, or I can use the icon on my quick access toolbar. This is the first step of the wizard, step one of three. What do you want to do? I want to create another pivot table report or pivot chart report using the data from an existing pivot table. When I hit next, here it shows me a list of the different pivot tables available. I want the consolidated pivot table. I hit next and then I select the destination for my pivot table. I'll be selecting cell A3 and then I hit finish and that other pivot table placeholder is created. And these are the same fields coming from combining the data and consolidating the data from the east, south and west worksheets. I can drag the row to the rows area. I can drag the column to the rows area. I can drag the values to the values area and I can drag page one to the columns area. What I really need to do is to change the row labels and the column labels. And I'm going to do that after changing the layout of my pivot table by going to the design tab of the ribbon. I change the layout to tabular form and now I want to edit the labels. So I go to the analyze tab if you type the label here, it doesn't change on the other side. If you edit the label here by clicking and selecting field setting, that doesn't affect the label that appears in the pivot table. But if you edit the field name in the active field box, that will change it everywhere. So here I'm going to type product and I hit enter and it has been changed everywhere. I'm going to select column and I'll name it quarter and I hit enter. I select page one, which used to be a filter in the previous pivot table where I consolidated multiple ranges referring to the sheet name, which is a region that I'm going to name it region. And finally, I can name the different regions. I know they are alphabetical. Then I type east, south and west. And I created a pivot table from an existing pivot table. In this workbook, I have a worksheet power pivot where I have three different tables 
and I named the different tables. So if I go to the table design tab, this is the products table, and this is the provinces table, and this is the category table. I loaded the three tables to the data model by going to Power Pivot, and then I click Add to Data Model. The three tables are already there, so if I go to Manage, I can see the three tables, and I created relationships between the three tables. Here I have the product, the province, and the category. If I go to Diagram View, then I see the relationships created between the three tables. When you have a data model, you can create a pivot table from within Power Pivot by clicking on Pivot Table on the Home tab of the Power Pivot window. But what if I want to create a pivot table from within Excel without going to the data model? Then I'm going to use a different functionality for doing this. If I go to the Model tab, I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon, and this time I click on the down arrow for Pivot Table, and I'll be selecting from Data Model. And by the way, this functionality is available in any installed version of Excel. I want to draw your attention to the fact that in the installed version, to access the regular Pivot Table wizard, I use the shortcut Alt and V. But with the introduction of this drop list, what I don't like myself and I don't find it enjoyable is that I have to add an extra character to use a shortcut to access each individual functionality. So if I want the table range, I use a T. If I want the external data source, I add an E. If I want the data model, I add a D. And if I want the last functionality, I add a B. So let's say I want the data model from data model. I have to use the shortcut Alt and V and add letter D. I don't find it practical, but anyway, if you like it, this is how it works. I click on From Data Model, and the new Pivot Table Wizard opens. I remind you, I'm in Microsoft 365. Here at the top, it says From Data Model, and I want to create it in the existing worksheet. Let's select the destination, and then when I hit OK, now I can see all the data coming from the data model, as well as other tables available in the workbook. If I want to see the revenue generated by region, I can expand the province table, drag the region to the rows, and then I have a revenue calculated in the products table. That's a measure. Then I drag the measure, the revenue measure, and I would have created my pivot table from the data model without going to the Power Pivot window. My next option is to create a pivot table from a data set that I created in Power BI Desktop and I uploaded to Power BI Services. And I already did that. I could also create a data model in Excel and publish it by going to the File tab and then click on Publish, and then click on Publish to Power BI Services and click on Export. That's one way of doing things. If I have the data model in the same workbook, I wouldn't go with the last functionality of creating a pivot table from a Power BI data set. I go back, I select the Power BI worksheet, and I have a data set that was created in Power BI Desktop and I published to my Power BI services. Let's have a look. Here is my account on Power BI services. It's the same account that I'm using for Excel. Then I go to my workspaces, I select a workspace, let it be this one, and it shows me that I have a report and I have a data set. I named it Power BI for Pivot Table. This is the one that I'll be bringing into Excel without even being here in Power BI Services. Then I'm going to close it, and from within Excel, I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon. This is the only option that's not available in the installed version of Excel from Power BI. And you see the same account, Office Instructor. When I click on that, I should be logged on to Excel using the same exact account. So when I click on From Power BI, a Power BI dataset pane opens on the right-hand side. It shows me the different datasets available in the different workspaces I have in Power BI services. The one that I want to bring is Power BI for Pivot Table in the Instructor workspace. So when I give it a click, it says, we are building your Pivot Table. It will take a moment, and here are the different fields. So I'm going to drag the region to the rows area, and then I drag the sales to the values area, and that won't work. Although it's a numeric field, I get this error. I should be dragging only measures. So when I hit OK, I have a measure total sales. When I drag it, I would have created my pivot table.
In this tutorial, I showed you 12 different ways and sources for creating pivot tables. We created pivot table from a list. We created pivot table from a table. We created a pivot table by using the recommended pivot table on the insert tab of the ribbon. We created a pivot table by using the quick analysis tool simply by selecting the pivot table control A or control asterisk. And then we used the artificial intelligence of Excel available on the right side of the home tab called the Analyze Data or Ideas. We created a pivot table from an external workbook by using the option from external data source and we chose a connection. Also, we created a pivot table from a query available in Power Query as a connection only. We used the workaround for creating a pivot table by using the pivot chart functionality available on the insert tab of the ribbon and then we used a beautiful option of consolidating multiple sources altogether using the old pivot table wizard that can be triggered by a shortcut Alt-DP or by adding the command to the quick access toolbar. And then I created a pivot table from another pivot table using the old pivot table wizard as well. I created a pivot table from a data model that exists in the same worksheet and I created a pivot table from a data set available on Power BI services. If you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.